This is a weird movie. If I told you there was an anime series adaptation of Thumbelina, you'd probably think, yeah, that makes sense. But let's take it one step further. It's an anime series adaptation of Thumbelina that's been cut down to an 80 minute movie and then gets dubbed into English. I wish I could say that's where the weirdness ends, but it only gets weirder from here. The movie begins with a woman going to a witch to talk about her rowdy daughter, Maya? Not Thumbelina. That's kinda odd for a Thumbelina movie, but okay. As I was saying, the witch gives the woman- Thumbelina? I thought we were watching Thumbelina! Wait, so this is an adaptation that also has the titular book in it and- <laughs> The woman gets Maya interested in the book, as per the witch's instructions, and- Can I talk about Maya's voice acting for a minute? But I brought you a surprise! A surprise for me? Huh? Mom, wake up! Don't stop now! Oh, great. But... Still, I wonder what happens to Thumbelina. Don't feel bad. Oh, all right. We made friends with a swallow, but he was attacked by a falcon. The voice actress sounds like she's trying to play a little boy. And you want to know what the ironic thing is? I've looked into this movie, and it turns out Kathy Cavadini, the voice of Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls, voices Maya. What a difference five years makes. Thumbelina the book shrinks Maya down and causes her shoes to change color, only for them to change back to blue after a cut, then back to red after some frogs try to kidnap her, then back to blue after she falls out a window and falls asleep. I'd say this was just inconsistent animation, but the next plot point's gonna prove me wrong. So Maya wakes up in the land of dreams, loses her blue shoes, and gets some red shoes from this good witch, Angela. Angela tells her to head to the land of South, where she'll meet the prince, and that... Your new red shoes are magical. In times of need, they will allow you to run faster. They will also let you jump higher, so that you can help anyone in need. But you must never use the shoes' magic for selfish reasons. You must only use the shoes to help others who are in need. Understand? Okay. But Maya uses them to try to run to the Land of South anyway, and she fails because of magic shenanigans and breaking the rules and stuff, and ends up in the Land of Sweets. Also, red shoes from a good witch. Why does that sound familiar? In the Land of Sweets, Maya meets a sugar fairy named Noble. She also sees an illusion created by the evil witch Cassandra, and... Wait a minute! This isn't Thumbelina, this is the Wizard of Oz! Think about it. A girl who is not gelling with her usual home life gets whisked away to a magic land where there are good witches and bad witches, meets a colorful cast of characters, travels with them to a distant location where they'll meet some sort of patriarchal figure who they think will solve their problems, and she wakes up from her adventure changed and ready to get along with her family at home. <laughs> Don't worry, I have a feeling he'll be back. Regardless, Maya and Noble travel for a while until the frogs that tried to capture Maya earlier in the movie meet up with them. Wait, but those frogs tried to capture her before she entered the Land of Dreams. So, do they actually exist? An earlier scene indicated that... So I see, I really am trapped inside my mother's dream. So, has Maya been in a dream ever since her mother fell asleep? Ever since she shrunk? Ever since she fell asleep on that flower? It's not really clear. Anyway, the frogs try to get Maya to marry their son, not unlike the original Thumbelina story. They try to escape, but then this super anime cat stops the frogs by looking at the book? I guess that's how that works now. But the cat provides enough of a distraction, and Maya and Noble fly to a tree where they meet some pixies. The pixies do a short musical number, and then a PowerPoint transition takes us back to the journey. Good scene, guys. Really added a lot to the story. 
Maya and Noble then end up at a rainbow lake where the frogs are waiting for them. Again, making the pixie scene totally pointless. Then the father frog just straight up murders Noble and takes Maya back to the frog shack. Maya tries to escape to no avail, and Hoppy, the frog's son, comes back into the shack with some strawberries that will turn Maya into a frog. Maya taunts Hoppy by saying, Besides, the person I marry will be a whole lot better looking than you. When I get married, I'm going to marry a prince. Well, what's the name of this prince of yours? The fact is, I'm going to visit the prince of the land of Sal. And Hoppy leaves the room. While he's out, Maya learns about the magic strawberries and pretends to be part frog to try to escape again. After dunking Hoppy, Maya gets attacked by a snake. Hoppy tries to save her and eats it, and then she prays to the shoes for help. The shoes work and Maya lets Hoppy down easy and takes him home. At home, the frogs think Maya beat the tar out of Hoppy and send her out on the lake as they prep the wedding ceremony. But Noble's alive, and gives this explanation as to why. Luckily, I melted. I dissolved in the water, but fortunately, I drifted toward the bank. A wave washed me ashore, And the sun dried me out. So Noble and Maya try to escape, with Maya's legs stuck to the lily pad, I guess. But the frogs are too quick. Luckily, Hoppy puts an end to all this. Please let Maya go, she doesn't want to marry me. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying let Maya go free. Hoppy, I think we need to talk about this. Are you sure that you don't want to be married to this girl? I'm very sure, Mama. I know I'll really miss her, but Maya has to travel on and find her mother. It would sure be nice to be married, but we could never be happy in this kind of situation. You know what? What would make me happy? For Maya to find her mom. Hoppy, we're so very proud of you. Hoppy! No matter how hard we try, we'll never find your wife this pretty. Uh, well then, that's settled. Well, the parents took it rather well, given the circumstances. The movie then cuts to Noble and Maya in a field, and Noble gets eaten by a fox and is supposedly dead for real this time. Oh my god, that's so dark. So Maya runs away from the fox after it starts fighting another fox, and then it turns out the blue fox is a minion of Cassandra. Maya mopes for a while in a forest, and then finds a little house occupied by an old mouse. So the mouse, named Aunt Ruth, invites Maya in and gives her some dinner. While inside, Maya meets up with Hoppy again, who explains how he ended up at Aunt Ruth's house. I decided to come along to help protect you! I got this swallow to give me a ride because I wanted to catch up with you as soon as I could. But then, we were suddenly attacked by this hawk. Whoa! And that's when I found him. Hoppy was very lucky I was passing by. But I still don't know what happened to that swallow. Now don't worry, I'm sure he's just fine. Well, at least that swallow wasn't voiced by Dom DeLuise. Maya looks for the swallow upon Hoppy's request, and then she says this stuff. Okay. Oh, he's just got to be! You, uh, don't want to do another take on those? Once Maya finds the swallow, Angela gives her a magical girl pendant to heal him. She succeeds, and then Yami Yuki the swallow. Then it would be my honor to take you there. I never felt better in my entire life! Starts to take them to the land of South. But the swallow is attacked by some kind of bird of prey again, and Maya and Hoppy end up in a lake. In the lake, Noble, who's still alive for reasons, meets up with Maya and Hoppy. Then Maya has a flashback. Then they travel. And then they're finally at the Land of South. If that sounded abrupt, that's because it was. In the Land of South, these bud elves, known as Hobbits, no relation, invite Maya and company to their tea party, which pisses off Cassandra. You are incapable of stopping them, you miserable wretch! So I won't ask you to try. From now on, your only job is to slow their progress in reaching the Crystal Palace! Huh? Just slow them down, Cassandra? Silence! Do as I command! Ask no questions! <laughs> now the hour has finally come to use the forbidden magic! <laughs> I call upon the great power of the Dark Crystal!
Now take your power from Maya's mother. Take your power from her nightmare. All the power! <laughs> so Cassandra's minion attacks our heroes while they're riding on these talking turtles. But oh no, Cassandra's minion has the Sharon gone. <laughs> Then the Shadow Prince, Shadow of the Crystal Prince, DSX Machina's into the picture and stops Cassandra's minion. And with them out of the way, the Swallow flies Maya to the Crystal Palace. At the Crystal Palace, Maya meets the Crystal Prince, but then Cassandra takes over the kingdom with her new dark powers. Then again, it's not like Cassandra had a lot of resistance. The tide has turned on the sweet little dream of yours, and your reign has ended. Now I will become the sovereign of this world and work my will, do you understand? I understand. As Cassandra casts a dark shadow on everything, Angela shows up and gives Maya a little speech. Did you forget, Maya? You have a power. A power that is stronger than you can ever imagine. I told you before, Maya. You possess all the power that you will ever need. And the shoes that I gave you, and the pendant, only help you to direct that power. My job is not to defeat Cassandra. That is left for you to do. And with the true magic inside her all along, Maya destroys the heck out of Cassandra's dark crystal. And so, with Maya having learned about responsibility, Cassandra and Angela go back to where dreams come from. Maya has a tearful goodbye with Hoppy and Noble, and the now golden swallow flies Maya back to reality. Mama, I just had the most incredible adventure! And you were there, and you were there, and you were there. And as the narration tells tells us what a good kid Maya became, our movie draws to a close. See what I mean when I say, this is a weird movie? Credit where credit is due. The old school art style is kinda neat. The voice actors, even Kathy Cavadini to some extent, do a pretty solid job with the material they're given. And if you're into 90s kid show cheese, the songs can be pretty enjoyable. But man does this suffer from how bizarre it is. It's not a straight up adaptation of Thumbelina, despite elements like the frogs, the swallow, and the field mouse. Nor is it its own thing. See my Wizard of Oz comparison. It's it's clear this was chopped up from some pre-existing series for a quick direct-to-DVD buck, and both the tone and the pacing suffer for it. Maybe the series itself is much better, but I can't say because it doesn't seem to exist anywhere on the internet. Still, if you have a soft spot for this movie, I say more power to you. It's certainly good for a bad movie night. You 